Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to and welcome to my preview for the Crystal Palace versus Arsenal game, which is at the weekend, well, which is tomorrow at half one at Selhurst Park. What can I say? As an Arsenal fan, this is pretty much the happiest moment that I can say for me at the moment as an Arsenal fan. You know, last season I wasn't happy as a fan because you know we was getting slapped by teams left, right, and centre, and it just wasn't it just wasn't happy to see. Um, but this season, I mean, I wouldn't expect it. You know, after having Man City losing the opening two games of the season, you know, having a new manager, new backroom staff, everything, I would not expect that we would be going on a run like this. Um, 11 straight wins in all competitions, seven with seven straight wins in the league. You know, I wouldn't have thought it, really wouldn't have thought it. But, um, you know what, we're doing absolutely brilliant at the minute. Um, so, guys, I'm going to talk, uh, I'm going to get into the preview. I'm um, going to talk about Crystal Palace. Um, you know what, Crystal Palace are 15th in the league, they have um, lost six games, drew one, one, two. Um, and with their goal difference has got a minus six. Um, they had, did you know, there was a game against Everton where I thought they played well. Um, and then, you know, Chris, and then Everton scored, you know, two late goals and to beat them. Um, I think for Crystal Palace, they are very lacking, lack of goals at the minute. So it's kind of frustrating the fans and, you know, they're frustrated with, um, with Roy Hudson at the moment. Um, because of lack of, you know, the substitutions, you know, he's, he's some of his tactics is very, very old at the moment. Similar to similar to Arsene Wenger, but I'm not gonna compare. I'm not gonna compare Arsene Wenger to Roy Hudson. So, um, but yeah, Crystal Palace haven't really been that great, and I think it's really gonna take its toll on uh, Sahar at the moment. Um, and I can see him probably deciding to leave in the summer. Um, now we're gonna talk about Arsenal. Well, as I've said. Arsenal are on 11 straight wins in all competitions, 7 in the league. We are 4th um, on the Premier League table with 7 consecutive wins. We've only lost 2 games. We haven't drew. So, And um, at the moment, we're still... And then, obviously, if we can beat Crystal Palace, our next big league game at the weekend, next weekend, is against Liverpool. And... Um, and I think we, we've got a chance to overtake them. And probably eventually, if we can get a good win against Liverpool, then I think we know where we stand as a team. Um, so, guys, let's get into the 1-11. to um, I'm going to start off with the goalkeeper, and that is Bernd Leno. Um, I know Petr Cech is also in full train. I think Unai Emery is going to go with him. But do you know what? To be honest, the way the, in the past couple of weeks, the way Leno has been playing, I wouldn't take Leno out at all so for me pretty straightforward choice Burnt Leno goes in goal um, we're going to start off with the right back position and I'm going to go with Hector Bellerin simple reason Bellerin has played well in the past couple of games um, he's doing well going attacking and getting forward he still has a problem with defensive game but I feel that with Bellerin he knows that he's got competition with Lichsteiner so and, that, and I think that's what's making Bellerin play a bit better because he knows he's got competition. Ages ago, last season, he didn't have no competition at all. Um, so, for me, Hector Bellerin goes at right back. Playing as the two centre-backs. First off, I am going to go with Socrates. Um, Socrates has played well, came back from his injury, uh, played against... Played against Lisbon. Uh, I thought he played very, very well. Decent performance. Very, very solid. Um, and I just hope that he can keep up this run of form into the next game. So for me, Socrates goes into that position. Playing alongside him is going to be Mustafi. Simple reason. I think Mustafi has played well in the past couple of games, especially against Leicester. Um, very, very solid. Very, very composed. Um, he, didn't he didn't slide into any tackles, which... He would have done. Um, but no, I think he's been pretty solid past couple of games. And, you know, as I've said before, it's an important season for him. So Mustafi goes at the centre-back. Playing at left-back. Um, I don't know who's fit. I don't know if Monreal's fit. And I don't know who, if Kolesinek is fit. Um, but as far as what I'm just going to pick, what I would go with if they are fit. So in that left back position is going to be Nacho Monreal. Um, simple reason: if Monreal is not fit, then I'll go with Klesnik. And if they're both not fit, then it would have to be Granite Xhaka. <laughs> but um, or even um, or Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Um, 
I know he's back because he played in the under-23s game um, last night against Swansea and, you know, they drew 1-1. But at the moment, I'll go with Monreal at left-back until I know otherwise. Um, Now, we'll go into the defensive midfield. Um, The first person is going to be Lucas Torreira. He is the enforcer. He is everything that we have needed for a defensive midfielder. Um, You saw the way Harry changed the game as soon as he got brought on from Lisbon. Harry completely changed the game. Um, He is a game changer. Let's put it that way. I feel that he is an absolute game changer. And there's really nothing that I... I've got nothing bad to say about Lucas Torreira. So, he goes into that position. Playing those alongside him is going to be Granit Xhaka. Um... Granite Xhaka, again, another player that's improved well and he's played well in the past couple of games. As I said, it's because he knows he's got Torreira for support. But Granite Xhaka, again, you know, he is key to our build-up play. And, you know, he's key for us in going forward. So, um, you know, with Ter- with Torreira behind him, Granite Xhaka's like, right, I've got the freedom. I can now go forward and attack the uh, defence. So, yeah, another player that's played well, Granite Xhaka. So he goes into that position. Um, we're now going to move into the um, the free attacking uh, mid, uh, the free attack um, as a free out on the right side. I'm going to go with Alex Awobi, the most improved player I think um, at the moment under Unai Emery. Very very impressed with him. Um, he plays absolutely brilliant out on the right. He gives us that natural width. Um, he gives us the pace going forward down the down the right side. And I feel that this is the best the best for him. Um, and I think this is literally the best that he's played for a very, very long time. So, for me, Alex Awobi goes out onto the right. Playing in that number 10 role is going to be Mizza Ozil. There's nothing I can say about him that's bad. Um, if he puts in a, a performance like he did against Leicester, he is untouchable. He's unplayable. And this is, this is what I want from Ozil on a consistent basis. Him... Playing the best that he possibly can in that number ten role, where he knows, where we know that that is his place where he should be. Um, so for me, Mesut Özil goes into that position. Playing out onto the left is going to be Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Again, another player that's been playing well. Um, you know, he didn't play too badly uh, against Lisbon the other night. Uh, he didn't get a goal, unfortunately. But that nice little flick that he, that back pass that he played to Danny Welbeck for him to go forward is is just phenomenal. Um, I feel that Aubameyang needs to be playing more closer to Lacazette, not as in a as a two up front, but if he comes in towards Lacazette, then that would give more pace, more support for Lacazette as well. And, you know, for Aubameyang to be out on the left, he know, with with us having Alex Awobi on the right to give us more pace, then obviously it's not going to leave um, Aubameyang isolated over on the left because then he knows he's got someone else who's got pace over on the other side. So for me, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang... Oh, and even against Leicester... When we played against Leicester, Aubameyang came on. Within two and a half minutes, he scores two goals. So, And as I've said, he is going to score a bag for uh, goals, and you're seeing that. So for me, Aubameyang goes uh, out onto the left. Playing up front as a leading striker is going to be Alexander Lacazette. This boy has been impressive for the uh, throughout the season so far. Um, shame that he didn't get a goal against Leicester. I feel that for, Leicester, for the game against Leicester... All that went wrong for him is that he didn't get a goal. He did everything right, uh, but it was just a goal that he didn't get. And I feel that in tomorrow's game against Crystal Palace, he's going to get a goal. He's definitely going to get a goal, the way I look at it, if he starts. Um, so uh, so uh, Alexander Lacazette goes up front as a leading striker. So guys, there is my 1-11. to That has been the preview, and that's been the predicted 11. Um, I really do hope that Arsenal can make it to make it 12 wins in a row um, and get eight straight wins in the league. And then after that, we've got a massive game against Liverpool, as I said, um, next weekend. So that's where we think that we are going to stand as a team. Um, so, yeah, that there you go, guys. Uh, predicted score, I am going to go with a 2-1. Uh, uh, no. Oh, I'll change it, actually. No, guys, I am going to go with a 3-0 Arsenal win against Crystal Palace. Um, If you are new to my channel, 
make sure you do hit that subscribe button make sure you hit that thumbs up button make sure you leave your comments below let me know if you're 1 to 11 in your score um, keep a look out for the players ratings um, for tomorrow's game um, and also I possibly might do a review as well um, so just keep a look out on the channel there's going to be a lot of content coming out um, Thank you to the 144 subscribers that have supported the channel. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Please do keep supporting the channel. Um, and as I say, for the people that are new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to 100,000 subscribers. Let's see. Um, until next time, guys, you've been watching Arsenal TV. I'm out of here.